Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today I have a very special guest, Nathan Potter. He's an elder at my church and he was the guy 13 years ago when I went to church for the very first time and he prayed for me after the sermon on the side of the auditorium. And so we're going to talk about that experience and we're going to get into the way he came to faith as well. Welcome Nathan Potter. Hey, glad to be here. I I'll, I do feel underdressed. <laughs> you are. Well, you <laughs> No, I, you look great. You're fine. You're fine. I, I usually wear t-shirts or, or I, a lot of times I do on the show, but today I just decided to wear a dressier shirt. I don't know why. Just look a little nicer. Well, I was wearing a tie yesterday, so maybe. And you I were, yes, tie. you were. You were wearing a jacket and tie. But so maybe you, you needed a break from that. Yeah. When we met, this was like the standard reality LA. Right. The V-neck. Like, yeah. A black V-neck with a blue, blue jeans. So we're, we're going back to old school. So <laughs> yeah, I want to get into that day that I got saved at Reality uh, and September 20th, 2009. And that moment I want to talk about, and I'm actually going to, because I wrote about it in my book and I want to, I'm actually going to read from my book, what was going through my mind right okay. before I came up to ask for prayer from you. I didn't know you from Adam, yeah. but you happen to be the first person kind of uh, you, the nearest person when I walked up. And so I walked up to you. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that story, because you were kind of a relatively new Christian, as I understand at that point. Yeah. So tell me how you came to faith in Christ. Yeah. Um, remind me the date of that. that it day. was September 20th, 2009. Okay. So I, yeah. Okay. So I became a Christian February, 2008. So okay. I, was, I was still very new. Um, and so you were on the prayer ministry already? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the prayer team. Okay. Yeah. okay. The, the first awesome. three years of, of life of Jesus was like breakneck speed. So um, I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, my dad's from upstate New York. My mom's from Georgia, South Carolina um, area which is why uh, sometimes I sound like I'm from the East Coast, but I also say y'all, uh, a yeah. little, little bit of a combo. Um, and I, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. I think we went to church once uh, when I was like four. But yeah, grew up just very American, secular moralists. Like there is a God, he is good. Just live your life and be good to people. Kind of a, kind of a thing. Uh, I heard the gospel in high school. Well, when I was a kid, my, it's kind of a funny side note. Uh, my, the two memorable, first memorable church experiences I had. One was I was doing an overnight, like a sleepover with my best friend and his mom was raised Catholic. So we went to mass on Sunday morning and I think they were still doing Latin. So we were <laughs> just like, and, and, and like, I got in trouble for playing with the kneel bar and, and everything was like quiet and reverent. I didn't know what was going on. It wasn't well lit. And um, they sang the song, Holy, Holy, Holy. And as they, you know, Holy, Holy, Holy. And I leaned yeah. over to my friend and I said, cow. And <laughs> like, Holy cow. And we just laughed for the rest <laughs> of the mass. That was my first church experience. My second was uh, his, my best friend's father, found out that his mother was taking him to mass and as kind of a revenge thing started taking him to a Baptist service when he stayed at his dad's house. And so my next church experience was a large room full of people who did not look like me. And there's like a horn section and like bright lights and everybody's happy to be there and dancing. And I was like, is this the same thing? Are they doing the same? <laughs> um, but I remember clearly walking away from that and, and thinking, I don't remember what was preached or anything, but I remember thinking like, if Jesus is who they said he is, I want that. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the end of it. I didn't have any other interaction with the church until high school when I started going to Young Life uh, because of a girl. And, uh, and heard the gospel and it was, it was very appealing but it was still the kind of what I call like the Midwest Jesus is your buddy gospel. Yeah. Um, like Jesus just wants to be your friend. Just let Jesus take the wheel. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, it was like 
life, death, resurrection is very much the gospel, but King Jesus wasn't part of it. Obedience to scripture wasn't really part of it. So I did that for a little bit, got involved in a youth group. They were all doing the things that I was doing before I got involved with, with Christian community. And I was like, well, if we're all going to go to church on Sundays, but then like basically sleep with our girlfriends on Fridays, like why yeah why Why bother (laughs) am i waking up early and missing part of the chiefs game if like i'm just gonna live like everybody else so i jettisoned all that it didn't make any sense to me it didn't seem powerful that was the thing it wasn't in the power to change so i moved to la in 2007 after graduating college what brought you to la um acting I, i went to school for theater uh, I got a BFA in theater from the University of, of Central Missouri, and I was Chicago or LA were my options. And my best friend, who I was talking about earlier with my church experiences, was in Chicago. He had started a theater company there, and he said, "Nathan, I think you do fine up here, but I think you're a West Coast guy. You're going to do better out there." So I came out here. I knew two people. Um, one of them lived in Ventura and was finishing up film school. The other was in LA, uh, following Jesus and pursuing an acting career. Uh, thankfully career wise, things went pretty well for the first nine months I was here, my career without, I didn't know that when you come to LA, you're supposed to have like contacts and network and these kinds of things. Um, I was just trying to call something up from the dust, like, and it actually worked. (laughs) <laughs> which is not the norm. like yeah yeah it was it was wild but everything else was crashing i parted my way through college so when i came out here i was like i'm gonna change i'm gonna like live a clean healthy california lifestyle and la is not interested in you doing that mm-hmm. so most of my friends by the, by by december 20, uh, 2007 i realized that i had two friends in all of California and everybody else I had gotten to know who said they were my friend basically was like a drinking buddy or a booty call. Those were the options. Mm. And any meaningful connection was felt impossible. Um, and I felt, I just felt dead inside. Got myself into a situation where it was like everything that I had planned for and wanted through my early twenties happened in an instant. And and I got there and I looked around and actually not too, not too dissimilar from your epiphany at fashion week. Um, it was fashion week, right? Yeah. Yeah. In Paris. I, I looked around at the situation and I was like, this is empty and meaningless and I hate it. And at, how long had you been in LA at this point? Uh, since July. So five months, six months. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well you got to that really quick it took me yeah. only 15 years to get to that place it took you five months i think uh, i think i i grew up now I, I didn't grow up in a christian home but i grew up in a very connected family and i knew what it meant to feel like i belonged like i had a place like i had influence and impact and people celebrated and enjoyed each other and me my, my family is really healthy overall so so i, I there was just so disjointed um out here and and I yeah I just remember thinking like I hate you I hate me I hate this all of this is meaningless and I don't know what my options are it really feels like this is the only way to live and I hate it yeah and I remember thinking and and I I may have called it a prayer at the time I remember thinking I kind of hope I open the door when all this is over and just nothingness swallows me up. I can't do this anymore. What do you mean by that? Nothingness follows you up. Like the image in my mind was if this is all there is, I would rather step into a void and just cease to exist. I can't do this. And um, that was a pretty jarring thing because that was Christmas morning, 2007. And you uh, stayed in LA on Christmas morning? No, I was in Kansas City. Okay. And, like manipulated a couple of situations to be like, okay, this is the this is it. And uh, and it just wasn't it. So when I got back to LA, I called my one friend who was a Christian and I said, I 
I need to go to church. The last time I remember feeling good about life, I was around church people. I need to go to church. And she had been, she had been such a good friend, Beckett. She was like, she gave me rides home when I got too drunk out of a bar. She'd like drive from North Hollywood down into West Hollywood on a Saturday at 1130 at night and like pick me up to make sure I got home safe. Like such a good friend. And, and I would tell her how empty I felt and she'd be like, yeah. And she talked to me about the kingdom of God with no pressure, just like laying it out in front of me. And, uh, and so when I said, I need to go to church, she said, you need Jesus. And I was like, I don't, sure. Whatever. <laughs> um, and I came, I came to a Sunday gathering at reality LA. So she, she was already going to reality. She, yeah. She had been part of reality since the beginning. Okay. She was part of the prayer meetings in carp. She moved down, was part of the church plant. Um, and so I, I said, we had, we had had, she, I knew her from high school and she was like my high school crush. And we had had like some back and forth, like, will they, won't they kind of stuff. And I was like, look, I'll make my own friends. Like, I don't want to disrupt what you've got going. Like I'll, I'll do yeah. my thing. So I got there and it was like people my age who weren't like the guys weren't all sitting around checking their phones, just waiting for the football game to start. Like people wanted to be there and were excited to be there and were excited to meet me without knowing anything about me. And they were selling books. So I was like, okay, there it is. Here's the money-making scheme. And I was like, <laughs> looking at the books. I was looking at the books and, and the lady at the, the book table, the book table is literally like a folding table with no tablecloth. It was like the most rickety. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the lady that she was my age, she's like 24. And she was like, Oh, by the way, if you can't afford, if you see a book you like and you can't afford it, you can just have it. That, that's, that's what Tom, Tom Nearing, um, the, the second week I came to church after I got saved, the week after I got saved, I was at the service at noon and I went up to that book table and yeah, I was, yeah. I was like, oh, I need a Bible. And I was, there was an ESV Bible. There was a stack of them. And I was like, and she's like, oh, it's, we only take cash for, <laughs> at that time. It was so rickety. They only took cash. Yeah. And I didn't have any cash on me. And I was like, oh, I don't have, before I could even get the words out of my mouth that I didn't have cash there, an arm reaches around me and hands the, the woman a $5 bill. It was $5. And I look at it, it was Tom Nearing. And he yeah. just, he just like bought the Bible. I was like, and I still have that Bible and I yeah. treasure it. Cause it's, it's, it's all, it's like a, basically in a frame, not really, but um, good. I treasure so much grace in that moment. That's good. So anyway, so you're at the book table. Yeah. And I just was like, okay, so they don't, all these people are excited to see me and they don't want anything from me. I was getting pour over coffee. I didn't even know what pour over was. There was pour over coffee. And I was like, this is a really good cup of coffee and I don't have to pay for it. I don't remember the pour over coffee, but yeah, it maybe was, they, they stopped yeah, that. Stop doing that. Yeah. By the time you got there, it was, there was too many people. We couldn't. Too many it. people. Yeah. But um, the guy playing lead guitar in the band stepped forward and, and started preaching. And Tim I was like, Chaddick. Yeah. Tim Chaddick was playing guitar and preaching and i was like what and, and he actually believed what he was saying yeah and I, I don't remember what was preached beckett i don't remember what was preached i don't remember what day it was it was probably because i'm wondering if you were in romans because it took it no, you were it was, it was before Romans. so so the first book i sat through was james james okay yeah whatever yeah. was preached that day was before james okay um, so so i don't i don't remember what day it was i don't remember what message it was I just remember thinking this guy believes what he's saying and he is not concerned with how I feel about myself. Every other church service I'd been to aside from the Catholic mass was this like, let's all feel good. Like, let's feel good. You feel good. And I feel good. Let's all feel good. <laughs> and, and I was like, this guy doesn't care. He just wants me to believe what he's saying. Yeah. And I, I was tell I, I, uh, when I talked to Tim on the show, he, it was funny because in the sermon that he preached when I got saved on September, it was Romans chapter seven. Mm -hmm. And I re-listened to the sermon and I, he literally said the word sin probably a hundred times in that one sermon. Yeah. So he, it was, that was so crazy to me. I was like, wow, I've never, and not, not only did he mention sin, but he, after he mentioned sin for 45 minutes, then he talked about how we need a savior yeah. because of sin. And, and that's 
that I, I appreciate, I really appreciated that so much about Tim. Like he wasn't afraid to talk about the real stuff yeah. you know, and why we need a savior, why we need yeah. redemption. Yeah. And the, the, yeah, exactly. And this, this switch flipped for me, my, you know, my eyes were open to the gospel. And I realized I, I'm, I'm, was it during of, the sermon? Yeah, it was during the sermon. I'm kind of a history nerd during the sermon. I had this realization that, Oh, Jesus doesn't just want to be my buddy. Jesus is king of the universe, and I am a rebel in his kingdom. And rebels don't get treated kindly. <laughs> right? Like, like I'm they get I've got thrown this, in the gulag, is what yeah, happened. I've got all this like medieval history in my brain, and, and I'm like, oh no, oh no. And then like the gospel comes out, and I'm just like, a king who is willing to give his life so that rebels become friends. And not only friends, but actually like active agents in his kingdom, not through coercion, but because of his love. I was like, I'm all in. I midway through the message, I remember leaning forward and looking around, like anticipating, like there's going to be an altar call at some point. Like, do I wait? Do I go now? Like, what do I, I think? Like, I want to do this. And then there was no altar call. There was yeah, just we don't this, do altar calls. There was this general, like, there was this general we all need prayer. There's carpets available. Come do business with the Lord. There's people you can pray with. And I was like, I don't know what any of that means, but I'm in. And I knelt down on the carpets and I, I don't remember. I remember like loosely what I prayed. I, I remember thinking like, do I have to confess everything? Cause it's going to take a while. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and I just said, Jesus, you know, everything that I've done. And I, I hate all of it. I, I'm sorry for all of it. And I don't, I want to leave all of it behind and whatever you want to do with my life. That's what I want. I don't even know what it is and I don't care. That's what I want. Wow. Yeah. And I went out that later that day I bought a Bible. I joined a small group. I like stopped going out drinking with my buddies. Um, and, uh, and that, yeah, that was the moment of conversion within a couple of months. I was, um, I was in two Bible studies. i uh, a guy in one of them had started mentoring me, discipling me. And, uh, and my friend who was a Christian, I just like, she was suddenly, I was like, Oh, I I've known you for nine years, but I feel like I, I didn't really know you. I know you, like I can feel a, a different sense of knowing, you know? And she was yeah. like, yeah, that's, that's the Holy spirit. And we talked, talked about that. And I was like, here's another thing. You're awesome. And I just love being around you. And you make me want to be more like Jesus. And I know what I would have done about that before Jesus, but I don't know what to do about that now. <laughs> and she said, we should pray. And I've got a little bit of an intense edge to me. So I said, okay, I'm going to fast and pray for two weeks. We're not going to talk. <laughs> and I read, I read Beckett. I read through, I like skimmed through the scripture. And anytime I saw a relationship, a romantic relationship, I stopped. And I read intensely two weeks, covered the whole text. And, uh, and when I got done, I was like, okay, I'd really like to, I'd like to make this an official thing. And she was like, oh, my mom wants to know what your intentions are. And I said, well, my intentions are that if you think that I'm marriageable, that I would like to marry you. And she was like, what? <laughs> I was like, there's nothing in scripture that says I can do this for fun. So I'm either in or I'm out and I'm all in. If you want, if you don't want to be in, that's okay. I'll live, but I'm in. And we got married a year and a couple months later. Um, wow. Yeah. And, and this then, was, and she was, she was your, your height. This is the same person, right? That was yeah, your high same school person. sweetheart. So Stevie and I met, Stevie and I met when we were 15 and, uh, and I asked her out a bunch. Uh, it was very Dawson's Creek. It was like, I'm always like, Oh, do you want to date? And she's like, no. And then like, <laughs> okay. And I like date some other girls for a little while. And then I come back and I'm like, no, what about no? And she's like, no. And it was just that, but we were, we were buds and we ran in the same friend groups and supported each other. We had a group of friends that supported each other throughout college, traveling to see each other a lot. Um, that's my other friend in California, actually. Okay. My other friend in California, Lindsay, who was going to film school, um, moved down here and I was subletting a room from her her place when when I was like I need to go to church and I mentioned to her I'm gonna go to church today sorry if that's weird and she was like can I go too and I was like sure so Lindsay I met when I was 14 
and was part of that friend group. So Lindsay and I were there the day that the, my eyes were open, hers were too. Wow. We were sitting next to each other and without like not talking to each other about it, but having almost exactly the same experience. And we, we got home that day and I can't remember who broached it first, but we were like, so I think I'm a Christian now. <laughs> and it was like, me too. It was like, okay, what do we do now? And we, yeah, we, we just, we've been, uh, yeah, walking together since we actually, um, the house we live in right now, Lindsay lives with us. Um, oh, okay. She's got a little suite in the house uh, with me and Steph and, and our three kids. So yeah, it's it, the, the first few years were a sprint. I kind of jumped around the timeline a little bit, but um and then so, what so what how so how did you transition from acting how did did, did you oh, yeah. how did you transition from acting to becoming on st to becoming a staff member at the church yeah so uh i didn't it wasn't immediate i became a christian was like okay i i can be a christian and an actor i don't see why not there's nothing in the scripture that forbids that so great um so i was still doing that and it was going well um I booked some stuff on my own. I was working for a production company who gave like bit parts to employees who wanted to build a career. So I did a little bit of that, but I was on a set and I was like, this was probably October, 2009. I was on a set and I was so excited. It was my first long shoot, two weeks, had a pretty prominent role the director asked for like character arcs and story notes and things like that. So I like did all my homework, right? I've got, got a background in this. Great. Let's, let's do the work. And I showed up on set and nobody else had done the work and nobody cared. And it was this like weird, like networking, but also kind of trying to get things from each other. And nobody really, everybody's saying, let's be friends. And like, Oh, I really like hanging out with you, but like you can feel that everybody's just trying to get something from each other. And I was like, this is gross. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about this. And I, I ended that shoot and started praying. I remember the, the day the shoot ended, I, I was living with a couple of guys at the time, but I was living in the living room because, <laughs> oh no. So this would have been 2008 because I was engaged. So I was living in the living room, uh, October, 2008. So I was like six months in christ and uh i waited till they went to bed and then i got out of bed and i got on my knees and i said i don't want to make this a big deal and i know i trained to act i trained for like seven years to do this and i moved my whole life after do this but jesus if this isn't what you want me to do i'm ready for a change i i, I think i'd prefer that um and almost instantly back at almost instantly the holy spirit said um, um, invest in other men, serve my church, love this city. And I was like, it had this like ministry feel to it. And I was like, wrong guy. You're like, not me, Lord, said someone else. Yeah. I was like, you, I like, I've got a girl problem. I've got, I've got a drinking problem. I just got here like wrong guy. I did that same prayer with almost the same response for two weeks. And over the course of those two weeks, the guy who was discipling me pulled me aside one day. I didn't tell anybody what I was processing. The guy who was discipling me, Justin Much, God bless him, lives in Montana now. What a great guy. Justin pulled me aside at a Bible study one night after our discussion. And he said, hey, I've been praying for you. And I, I want you to consider going into ministry. And I was like, stop reading my journal, man. What are you talking about? And he like, he just very gently, like he laughed. And then he very gently was like, here are the things that I see God doing through you. And that doesn't necessarily mean a call, but it might. I want you to consider it. And then another thing, like in that same two week window, Tim on a Sunday. Tim Chaddock, who was the pastor of our church. Right, yeah. Chaddock. Uh, Tim Chaddock wasn't feeling well and he's getting ready to preach. And I was like, Hey man, can I pray for you? Like, I don't want you to die or anything. And it's just kind of like joking. And he was like, that's all right. If I did, I know you'd just pick up the pulpit anyway. And I was like, what is happening? 
and I got coffee with him a few weeks later and I said, I, I've been praying and I don't know. I, it seems like there might be a call to ministry in there. And he was like, oh, I know. I've been praying for you. I know. And I was like, what is happening? And he was like, I want you to lead a, a small group. And I, like, I wasn't even a year in at that point, which was crazy to me. So, so I prayed about it. Um, and in the spring, I, like after a bunch of prayer and talking through everything, and, and Steph, Steph and I were engaged at the time. She goes by Stevie, her given name Stephanie. So I switch. Sorry. If that's yeah, I know that that could be confusing to people. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. I, yeah. Just, I, I'll try to be consistent. Um, she was like, I, I don't, this is, I don't want to be a pastor's wife. And I was like, I, I'm not going to say no to Jesus. Like I want to do. Um, she settled on it. And I, I just like emailed all my contacts one day and I was like, Hey, I've been called away from the industry. I love you guys. I've loved the work we've done, but I'm out. Um, and then I sent a separate wow. email to my friends in the industry. And I was like, Hey, I'm out, but we're friends. So if there's a thing that you're like, Hey, I want to work with you. Like, of course I'm open to that. This just isn't my career anymore. Yeah. And I went and got a job uh, and then I got laid off from my job. I just got a job working retail. So Stephanie and I started, Stevie and I started uh, a community group in April of 09. We got married in May of 09. Uh, that summer, I got laid off in June, June 1st. Um, but I got laid off with like three months severance. And we had the London prayer tour. Oh, right. The first attempt at, at Reality in London. Yeah. And uh, that was in August. And I was like, nobody's going to hire a guy and let me take 10 days off, like right after you hire me. So I'm just going to ride this severance out and do like full time reading, praying, talking to people, hanging out. So I did that over the summer, went on the London prayer tour, led a team on the London prayer tour for some crazy reason. Uh, and Tim was like, you're leading. And I was like, what? And then when we got back, Tim called me and he said, do you want a job? And I was like, sure. So I got hired part time to do whatever administrative thing needed to be done. I was all over the map. Um, and then I went full time June of 2010. Wow. Yeah. And now and you're an elder. Sprint. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, I mean, that's a much longer road, but yeah, the, the pastors brought me in, uh, into the room in 2016 and said, Hey, we see the call. We affirm it. We think you're ready. Let's start developing you. Um, and I was ordained in 2018. September wow. 2018. So I was baptized in September, 2008. I was ordained in uh, September of 2018. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Well, praise God. Well, okay. So I yeah. want to get to the book and I want to read what I, I say about kind of the moment. Yeah. So this is September 20th, 2009. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I go to my first church service, evangelical church service ever. And I hear the sermon from Tim Chaddock the pastor roman seven mm -hmm. and I, obviously you know people know this but i just like completely resonated as truth in my mind in my heart and i was blown away by the sermon and then after the sermon tim would say you know there's you know there's people there's a half hour of worship time after the sermon Mm -hmm. So the lights kind of dim a little bit. And then he's like, there's people on the sides of the auditorium. And if you need prayer for anything, feel you know free to go ask for prayer. Yeah. And when he said that, I was kind of like, oh my gosh, what is that? And so in my book, I said, I considered going over to the side of the auditorium and asking for, for prayer, but doing so would mean admitting to myself that this all could be real. And I wasn't sure I was ready for the impact such admission would have on my life mm. for some reason a thought came to me that uh the people who invited me to church were probably watching every move move i made so i just stood there frozen simply too embarrassed to move as the music continued i kept feeling the pull to ask for prayer i would take one step forward then immediately step back this went on for several minutes i must have looked ridiculous as i wrestled internally with myself 
finally, I just thought, you know what? I'm here. I might as well do this. So I walked down the aisle to the right side of the auditorium and went to the nearest person I could find on the prayer team. And that was you. And I said to you, quote, hi, I'm not a Christian and I don't know what I believe, but I'm here. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> which i when i get when i speak at places i always say this is like a christian's fantasy come true like hey i don't know what i believe but i'm here um and and then you immediately responded okay let me pray for you and he and i said go on i'll just this is the last part he laid his hands on my shoulders and uttered a long and powerful prayer i don't remember exactly what he prayed but i remember thinking why does this stranger care about me so much there was so much, there was such a sense of love in his words and a tone that I was and tone that I was deeply moved by. Uh, mm. After I, after he finished praying for me, I thanked him and made my way back to my seat. And of course, that's when it all went down. The Holy Spirit was like, <laughs> but do you remember that moment that when I walked up to you? I do. Um, I do. And I, I remembered it. I remembered it for a long time before before seminary, before the book, like, I just remember like that it, it stood out to me too, for, for a long time. Um, there was, I was on the prayer team every week. There were a lot of people I prayed for, uh, but you, you stood out and I, I don't, I don't remember what I prayed either, but I remember the feeling. Um, my sense was that God was doing something in you that, you couldn't comprehend and therefore I couldn't be fully aware of. Uh, I don't remember what words I prayed, but I remember there were like two themes. One was uh, that, that you would know the overwhelming affection of Christ. And the second was that he would give you a love for the word that would, that would, um, the idea was that the love for the word would then become like the bedrock center of your life that then incorporates everything. Yeah. Uh, encapsulates everything else. Th those are the two things I remember like the idea of. So then as things were happening in your life, I was like, Oh my gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and and how, soon, how, how soon after that day, did you find out that I actually came that I had, was born again that day? Uh, I think like, immediately after your prayer, like I was born. Yeah. Again. Yeah. I, well, here's the thing. I remember saying him in and like you walked away and I watched you walk back and sit down and you were like, you were, I like could see you. Yeah. Like, I was on the fourth row. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like on the aisle closest to me, so I could see yeah. you very clearly. I think you, I think you even put your sunglasses back on, <laughs> I think. I did. And just, and just sat there like this. Cause I was bawling. I was crying. Yeah. And, and I, and I kept praying for you. Um, and I was praying that, that the Lord Jesus would like change your heart in that moment. Um, did you see me kind of like doubled over in tears? Cause I was, I was like, I, I remember somebody, at that point, I think somebody else. Oh, okay. Me. Okay. But yeah. I, I definitely saw you sit down and, and do one of these, um, kind of shield your eyes with all, also having your sunglasses on in a dark room. Amazing. Like, There's something going on there. Uh, whoever found out first told the staff like immediately. So, um, so, and I think I was like, was he a guy sitting like right about here? And everybody was like, I don't know. So I, I found out, I think that week. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That cool. um, yeah. And it's, it's kind of those moments like, you know, stepping out and it's like, the, you know, God meets you. Like when even just kind of taking that, like you did when you went to church that day. And I did, you know, when, when I was invited to church and I was like, if I go, <clears throat> you know, I could be, this could be humiliating. And like, what if my old friends find out that I went to a church uh, service, they would think I'm insane. And, right. but it's like taking that like step into church and then kind of taking that step to get prayed for. Cause it was, I felt again, it was like this pull I felt. And it's like, when you're obedient to God's call, like that's, he meets you there. I mean, <laughs> the same thing what happened with me in seminary when, 
God called me to seminary. And I was like, what? This is crazy. How am I going to do this? My life, I don't, I I'm going to have to turn down all these jobs. Like, but it's just like, God, I was just like, okay, God, whatever you want. And then of course, <laughs> the second I was obedient to him about that, he just opened the floodgates and opened the doors to everything and, and paid for my, all my seminary and everything. And so it's just that kind of obedience to the to those little kind of moments of those like when you were called into the ministry like that is so powerful and when you're obedient god just is like okay like when you're doing god's will he is just he's going to provide he's going to yeah. provide for you yeah so that's that's amazing and that and this brings me back this this is kind of where i want to end is how important the local churches, how important it is to, to be a member of the local church, to belong to a local church, because that's where all this happens. Like all these things have all these crazy, I mean, there's I, I, people who watch this show for a while and read, read my book know that there's so many more things, that, <laughs> so many amazing things that have happened at church services. And, and that's where stuff went, goes down. And, and, and it's so, I mean, that's, I, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not giving kind of a theological explanation of it, but th it's just so crucial to be a part of a local church. Yeah. I think, I think actually the local church is where it goes down is a great theological sign. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, for a long time I was uh, the uh, a driving voice behind our community group structure and vision and one of the things that we talked about continually was the local church and in the in the the local manifestations of the church. Sunday gatherings, yes. Also, small group Bible studies, community groups, life groups, whatever your church calls them. That's the kingdom of God showing up on your couch. Like the 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 will of the cosmos is bent towards God's kingdom, and you get to see it happen in your living room. Yeah. That's just, I mean, that by itself, I hope just blows us away continually. And, and if we, we want to see, if we want to see God's kingdom, if we want to seek first the kingdom, right, we want to see it manifest, like the local church is the place to do that. Um, I think Paul says in first Corinthians, if you want to see the gifts, if you want to see, like, if you want to seek after like manifestations of the Holy Spirit at work in your life, he says, seek to build up the church. Yeah, that's it's what for. that's what it's about. Yeah, it's funny because even uh, you prayed for me yeah, last night and I it was funny. I think it's this. I think it may be. I mean, I could be wrong, but I think it's the, the, the second time you've ever prayed for me. <laughs> like, so it was like for in 2000, in 2009 and then last night. Right. Or I could be wrong. Uh, there's, but, there's probably other times, but I've, yeah, but I what, what's crazy. About, I wasn't on the prayer team, so. What's crazy about that moment last night is I didn't want to get prayed for. I wasn't in the mood. I wasn't. But again, I felt this kind of pull by the Holy Spirit. And I was like, oh, I have to go get prayer. And so I walked up to you and you prayed for me. And I'm telling you, I like you prayed for me. And I felt kind of I felt the spirit, but I got back to my seat and we were doing, we were singing worship and that's when it all hit me. Like I literally started crying because it was like, wow, like the, the, you, the prayer from you. And then the, the, the hymn we were singing, I forgot, I forgot when, when it was, but it was really powerful mm -hmm. and it just like, everything just hit me. And it's like those moments is where that that's where God encourages you by his Holy spirit. He's like, look, I'm here. I'm present here. And I'm going to encourage you right now. Yes. Because you were obedient to me telling you to go get prayer. <laughs> so. Yeah. And it, it, it also, it roots us in what's true. I was yesterday morning, um, a, a local church asked me to come fill the pulpit. Um, and help Hollywood out. Presbyterian. Yeah. Hollywood Presbyterian church asked me to come up and they're high liturgy. And part of the high liturgy is uh, the person preaching has to sit on that like throne behind the pulpit the whole service which was uh, uh, I told my wife I was like I'm so glad I have acting training because like <laughs> acting, being being normal in front of that many people is not an easy thing to do so yeah. 
Um, but I was sitting there and the advantage of being there is you can see and hear everybody. And of course, you can, you can hear everybody in the congregation. You can hear the voices of fellow saints affirming the gospel, affirming the truths of who God is, affirming that, yes, he loves us this much. And even if you don't feel like singing, you can sit and hear and receive that affirmation and strength. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was sitting there and I was hearing all this. I don't know any of these people, right? I've, Reality LA is the only church I've ever been part of. I don't know any of these people. And yet, here I have family who is singing and reminding all of us that God is faithful, that yes, he's king. And that means something to me that his life, death, and resurrection has changed my soul and brought me into submission to his word. And, and, and hearing that just is always such a, it's a powerful reminder that this isn't something that we made up and it isn't even something that we necessarily would have chosen for ourselves, but it is some, it is something that has changed us and is overwhelmingly good and permeates all of our life. And wherever you're at week to week, you can come in. I love Jackie Hill Perry said, um, the church can praise you into joy mm -hmm. and, and bring you back to that yeah, Give me that's what happened to me last night. Yeah. 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 Well, we're going to leave it there. And um, I, I mean, I just I just as a because I just forgot to mention this. I, when I go when I speak at different conferences and churches, I always refer to you as because I, 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 I talk about how I went up for prayer to you. <laughs> See, I went up to you for prayer and, I'm, and you prayed for me. And I'm like, I always tell people, how does this random straight dude love me so much? <laughs> so thank you for being the random straight dude who loved me. My, my mother-in-law read the book and she was like, told that part of the story. She's like, I just can't believe that. And like, it was so moved. Wow. And, I and I, by the whole book, but she was like retelling that part. And I was like, that was me. And she was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Love, loved that. <laughs> wow. Well, praise God. Thank you, Nathan Potter, for being on the show. Yeah, thank you, man. It's it's great to be here. Always great to talk to you. We should do this more. But Let's do it. Out. We'll do it once a like, week. We'll do a weekly show. A latte and uh, yeah, better. Yes. All <laughs> right. Well, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.